now that we're talking about the greatness of this team, why is it that we feel like we can we have the guts to keep going further than anybody else? Uh, well, I mean, first of all, is um, I I really want to make sure that I clarify with with everything that I believe with what's happening with this team. I, I believe that Sam Presti has this positive attitude about him that the guys that he's picking are going to be great. Um, and then I, I believe that Sam Presti is picking this this mentality and um, this the way of a uh, heart, a way of playing. I, it's something that I recognize because I played with that type of passion, with that type of desire. Um, it's not easy. It takes a lot of out of you. And I remember after games just being so worn out that, you know, the next day I didn't do anything because I laid everything out on the court. These are the guys that Sam Presti's going after. And so when you're looking at it and you're saying, okay, here's this guy that's incredibly talented and he's got the passion and the desire and he's putting in all this insane amount of work, you know that that's going to translate. You know, like if you're looking at a player like Carl Anthony Towns and you're saying, okay, this young man, he's going to be a good player, you know, one of the better big men shooters uh, that the league has seen. But to me, he's not even scraping his potential. Well, why is that? You know, why is that Zion Williams gains 40 pounds in the offseason? It's because they don't have this particular desire to be great. You know, you look at Josh Giddy, you look at J-Dub, you look at Chet, you look at Shea, you look at yeah, the list goes on. These guys want to be great. They're not okay with just being mediocre and playing video games. Like, how many guys have you heard that play video games on this team? How many of them have ever talked about playing video games? It's, it's occasional, something that, but not often. Not often, because it's not their main focus. And I think that's very, like, crucial with these young kids growing up is that everything's based around video games and cell phones and all this other stuff. But, like, I don't see these guys on cell phones. I don't see these guys talking about video games very often. There's not this, you know, impact of I have to get my kicks off of this stuff. It's these guys are putting their extra time in the gym. So when it comes to evaluating, that's how we evaluate. How how are these guys, you know, going out there and 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 producing? How are these guys getting better? How are they developing from, you know, January to February? Okay. Now let's evaluate January just in itself. How good did J Dub go from December to January? How did good did Josh Giddy go from December to January? And then you're able to back it down and then be able from there get another idea of where things are going. Because we've said in this before is that it's not the first couple of months, not the first three months of the season that rookies uh, do bad. Most rookies do very well in the first three week, uh, months of the season. It's the all-star break around the all-star break that they start getting tired and teams start understanding how to play them on defense that you start seeing this, this rise or this, you know, um, 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 negative Regression. play. Yeah. Yeah. And we're seeing with Paulo and Ben um, Mathuin and some of these other guys, but you're watching Kessler, Kessler and you're watching J-Dub rise in the rankings. And the reason is, is because these guys are playing better as the time goes on. And you're starting to look at it and say, okay, yeah, this means that J-Dub has more of a chance to be a longtime star because of it. Or Josh Giddy has a, a more of a chance to be a longtime star because look at what he's done at 20 years old. It's, it's easy to compare some of these guys because when you're understanding what Sam Presti is doing, and understanding why he is drafting these guys, then it's easy to put one and two together that he's creating a team and a team atmosphere. So what do you need for that? And if you're looking at the draft, it's not about big men. It's not about point guards. It's not about, you know, small forwards or power forwards. It's about players for Sam. And it's about heart. It's about passion. It's about all this other stuff. And if you're looking at who he's drafting, that's exactly what you're seeing. So when it comes to evaluating talent, if that's what we're seeing from these draft picks, you know where Sam is going. You understand it. So then we can go there and we can automatically assume where the talent's at. And, and to me, talent is something that it's earned in the NBA. And yes, some people are like, oh, look, it, it's given. But those guys that were given talent, right, Mark, they're not in the NBA long. The ones that earn their talent are in the NBA 15 years. And that's what right. the Thunder are doing. They're earning their talent. They're not just taking their talent and being like, hoo hoo, look at me. I'm going to play video games. Right. And look, as fans of the Thunder, as fans of a team that has seen great players come up as rookies and, and go on to have great careers, it's always our game to try to like project talent. Like, let's look at this player now and let's try to evaluate where they could go. And one thing about Shea that we need to look at is 
a lot of people did not see he, that he was on the trajectory that he was. Now, I saw the trade for Shea as being critical because of the fact that we have the, the opportunity to give him an unlimited ceiling, right? We've seen yeah. so many people, you know, to make the most of their opportunity here at the Thunder. So Shea just seemed like one of those guys that was young enough where if he dug in, he could really do anything. And when you sure. look at Josh Giddy and J-Dub and you say those are two of the best three rookies two of the best five rookies we've ever had, but arguably mm. the two best rookie seasons we've ever had for the Thunder are in J-Dub and Josh Giddy. And you try to extrapolate and you try to project into the future and you take a little bit of the past to help guide your decisions about where you think things will go sure. into the future. You end up bringing up names like Magic Johnson, like Dominique Wilkins, like so many of the greats, Larry Bird, Michael Jordan but can be brought up when you talk you. about players like Kobe Bryant. My question to you is like, what, if we're not doing this and comparing players to great players, right? Then what mm -hmm. are we doing? We're not a dynasty. We're not even the beginning of a dynasty. What, what we are is just a mediocre team. If we're not going comparing our players to the greats, we need our players to be compared to the greats to be a great team and a great organization. And the only way to do that is by drafting great. So if we're comparing these guys to, you know, guys like I, I love Patty Mills, right? But if right. we're comparing these guys to Patty Mills and guys like that, they're going to do great. They'll have great careers in the league, but they'll never be able to have that accomplished aspect of it, of being an all-star, right. being an all-NBA all, all -NBA team. And if that's the case, then, then Sam Presti is going to blow this team up in a few years because that's not what he wants. He doesn't want a, full, a team full of guys that, that don't have that talented vibe on them. And, and you look at J-Dub, and you look at Josh Giddy and you look at Shea, and then you look at Chet. And then you look at Dort, our projected five starters right there. And you're like, this is not normal. And you say, J-Dub, probably the best rookie we've ever had. You look at Josh Giddy, probably the, one of the top three rookies we've ever had, right? You got um, uh, Shea, have we ever had a better 24-year-old uh, um, Thunder player? No. Then you I look mean, at... You could argue I mean, KD, right? Okay, okay. Maybe you can argue KD, but the, the, looking at what, what Shea brings to the table for this team... Would you rather KD at 24 years old without knowing no. KD's future or Shea's at 24 years old without knowing his future? Like, that's where it goes back down to is, you know, right. I think personally we have the best 24-year-old that's right. ever played for the Thunder. And then you have, you know, uh, um, Jalen Williams, have, have, have Jay Will, okay, at the four, at the five. Have we ever had a better big man at this young, at his rookie? No, we have not. Okay, and, and we haven't got into Chet. Have we ever had a better defender um, on the Thunder as Dort? No. Dort is the best defender, um, defender we've ever had, minus somebody that's getting really close to him right now, J-Dub. So if you're asking me if this team has the legit opportunity to be the greatest Thunder team to ever have, yes, absolutely, because what everything is projecting. Expect greatness. That's what it comes down to, guys. We've been Thunder fans for long enough. It's not about whether or not this team will be great. The question is how great. How, how far great. will they go? Right? And we've seen teams make it to the finals. We've seen teams go to the conference finals. We've seen teams give all-time great teams run for their money. And it's been a hell of a ride. But to sit back and say, oh, well, we don't want to project into the future, that's silly. That's all we want to do. Like, we want to live in the present because we want to be watching the players evolve. But we also want to say, if this happens, then blank. That's what we want to do. We want to say, if this continues, then the player will get to blank. And if we can't do that, then it's not a podcast. It's a circle jerk. Well, and, and think about it like this, man. If we're not looking back at the history of the game to look forward for the future of the game, right, then... It, it, I, I'm shocked that we're even ha saying this, but the reality is, is that if, if the, we have this mentality, right, then why, why are we reading all these old war books about how yeah. to have the pro proper formations and how to have tank right. battles and how to have, you know, aircraft carriers placed in the right place? Why? Well, let me tell you why. Yeah. It's because you learn from the past. You learn. Because the only way through the past to the better place is through the to the future is is understanding where everything came from. And for us to say here and say, I think Josh Giddy is going to be one of the best point guards of this generation. 
isn't silly because he, he, he has the skills to be able to do that. For us to sit here and say that J-Dub is the best rookie to ever play for the Thunder, listen, the stats prove themselves, man, period. If you want to say that there is no better, there is no better player than um, Shea Gilds Alexander for the Thunder than 20, um, at 24 than, than what we have right now, then I will sit here and argue with you all day. Like, I, I do not care because the reality of where this team is going and where this team was is, is two different directions. And, and the crazy thing about that, Mark, is that we made it to the conference finals a bunch of times. We made it to the finals once, and we still have a crazy different trajectory with this team. So buckle up, because we're going for the fucking ride of a lifetime, baby. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you next time.